The Churches of Christ present Bible Talk. In ancient times, one of the most important roles that a soldier could play was that of being a watchman. And it was so important because there were lives depending on them to sound the alarm if an invader was coming. Did you know that as Christians we've been given the awesome task of being watchmen? And it's our duty to sound the alarm for the souls who are depending on us. That's going to be our study today. So won't you stay tuned after this song of praise. Hello again, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Bible Talk. We're truly grateful for your viewership today, and it's always our aim to present God's Word in simplicity and truth. I want to personally thank you for giving me this opportunity to study God's Word with you today, and I pray that you find this study beneficial to your walk with Christ. In ancient times, the watchman played a vital role in ensuring the safety of a kingdom. A watchman was one who was uh, commissioned to stand a post, oftentimes on the city wall that protected the city. And if they saw danger, if they saw an army approaching or danger coming, the sword coming to them, then they would sound the alarm, ring the bell, blow the trumpet to let everyone inside that they needed to get to a place of safety. And all of the lives oftentimes within the city depended upon their ability to carry out this task. In Ezekiel 33 and verses 1 through 9, Ezekiel expounds upon this very fact. Notice with me in Ezekiel 33 and uh, beginning at verse 1, Ezekiel says, Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, speak to the children of thy people, say unto them, When I bring the sword upon a land, if the people of the land take a man of their coast and set him for their watchman, if when he seeth the sword come upon the land, he blow the trumpet and warn the people, then whoever hears the sound of the trumpet and takes not warning, if the sword come and take him away, his blood shall be upon his own head. He heard the sound of the trumpet and took not warning, his blood shall be upon him. But he that taketh warning shall deliver his soul. But if the watchman see that the sword come 
And blow not the trumpet, and the people be not warned. If the sword come and take any person from among them, he is taken away in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at the watchman's hand. So thou, son of man, I have set thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore thou shalt hear the word at my mouth, and warn them from me. And when I say unto the wicked, O wicked man, thou shalt surely die. If thou dost not speak to warn the wicked from his way, that wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. Here in these verses, Ezekiel has explained to us the vital role that a watchman plays. And God is clear that if the watchman sounds the trumpet and people don't listen, that's on them. But if he doesn't sound the trumpet and those people die, their blood will be upon the watchman's hands. And then he makes the spiritual application that he's been sent to warn Israel. And if he doesn't do that, their blood will be required at his hands. Throughout history, many disasters have occurred because of the failure of watchmen. Just take, for example, the sinking of the Titanic. Frederick Fleet and Reginald Lee served as the two lookouts the night that the Titanic struck the iceberg that would ultimately lead to its sinking. Ultimately, some 1,500 of the 2,200 passengers died when the ship sank. Inquiries into the tragedy showed that the lookouts were not assigned binoculars as they should have been, and therefore they were not able to see the iceberg until it was too late. The watchmen who were tasked with watching for the safety of everyone on board ultimately were not able to carry out their task and disaster was the end result. And friends, as disastrous as that night at sea was, there is no greater tragedy than the tragedy of individuals losing their souls because Christians did not carry out their task to be watchmen. Hear this word of mine and give them warning. That's what God calls Ezekiel to do. And in God's call of Ezekiel and for us to be watchmen, one finds, number one, the calling. The calling of Ezekiel was twofold. God called Ezekiel first to hear in Ezekiel uh, chapter 3 and verses 1 through 3. Notice uh, God says, Moreover, he said unto me, Son of man, eat that thou findest, eat this roll, and go speak unto the house of Israel. So I opened my mouth, and he calls me to eat that roll. And he said unto me, Son of man, cause thy belly to eat and fill thy bowels when this roll that I give thee. Then did I eat it, and it was in my mouth as honey for sweetness. In verse 10 he says, Moreover he said unto me, Son of man, all my words that I shall speak unto thee receive in thine heart and hear with thine ears. In verse 17 he says, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When God calls Ezekiel, his call is twofold. And, and at first he calls Ezekiel to hear. The context of Ezekiel chapter 3 really begins in chapter 2 as Ezekiel is having a vision about what God is calling him to do. And God is calling him first to hear. In Ezekiel 3 and verses 1 through 3 as part of this vision, Ezekiel's handed a scroll, a roll, that he's to eat and to consume. And the point is that Ezekiel is to consume the Word of God, to hear it and to let all that God has said to first abide in him. See, before Ezekiel can carry the message to others, the message must first be in Ezekiel. Consider again the Titanic as I mentioned in the introduction. Why could the watchmen not properly keep a watch for the iceberg? Well, because they were ill-equipped. They were not given the binoculars, the equipment that they needed to carry out their task. They could not watch. And so if, if Ezekiel is going to be an effective watchman, then he must first answer the call to hear God's word himself and to allow that word to abide in him. He must be properly equipped before he can sound the alarm for others. Ezekiel is called first to hear, but then secondly he's called then to speak. Ezekiel's not to just stand idly by and watch. The name watchman is a little misleading. A watchman doesn't watch just to watch. He watches so that he might deliver warning. And so having heard the word of the Lord, Ezekiel is then told to go and to speak. In Ezekiel 3 and verse 4, it says, And he said unto me, Son of man, go, get thee unto the house of Israel, 
and speak with my words unto them. And so first, Ezekiel, you need to hear. You need to let God's word abide in you. And then you must speak. You must sound the alarm. And here's the thing. If a watchman is ill-equipped or refuses or is unable to sound the alarm, then destruction is coming to those who need the warning. And so number one, we find the calling. But then number two today, we find the challenge. Of course, the task given to Ezekiel would face certain opposition. And the opposition is presented like the calling in two major aspects. First, there is the opposition of familiarity. Notice with me Ezekiel 3 and verses 5 and 6. He says, For thou art not sent to a people of a strange speech and of a hard language, but to the house of Israel. Not to many people of a strange speech and of a hard language whose words thou canst not understand. Surely had I sent thee to them, they would have hearkened unto thee. God tells Ezekiel, you're not going to go to a strange land or to people who speak another language or who are hard of uh, uh, understanding. Ezekiel would be speaking to his own countrymen. Now that alone at times presents great challenges because for whatever reason, sometimes beyond our ability to explain, those who are closest to us are sometimes the worst listeners to what we have to say. Now this presented opposition to the ministry of Christ as well. You remember in Matthew 13 and verse 57, Jesus said, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country. You know, sometimes those who know us the best, sometimes those who are the closest to us, have the hardest time heeding the warnings that we give. Ezekiel was going to have that opposition. He was going to people whom he knew, to his own countrymen. And God even says that if you were going to somebody else, they might hear you. But you're going to have trouble getting your own people to hear Secondly, is the opposition of forwardness or insubmissiveness. Not only would Ezekiel be speaking to his own countrymen, but they were a froward, a rebellious people. In verses 6 and 7, uh, again we read in verse 6, at the end of verse 6 he says, Surely had I sent thee to them, that is to those in a foreign land, he said, They would have hearkened unto thee. But the house of Israel will not hearken unto thee, for they will not hearken unto me. For all the house of Israel are impudent and hard-hearted. God says, these people are not going to receive this message well. In fact, many of them are going to reject it. Rebellion is a word that typifies the history of God's people Israel. And their rebellious attitude would be a great challenge to the task that Ezekiel has to be a watchman and to sound the warning. Ezekiel's task was great and it was not without challenge. But those challenges would be eased with our third point today, and that is the comfort which God gives. Thankfully, watchmen are not left without comfort from God. In our text in Ezekiel chapter 3, we see that there is comfort as God strengthens. God tells Ezekiel, you're not going to be alone, but I'm going to be with you. In verses 8 and 9, the text says, Behold, I've made thy face strong against their faces, and thy forehead strong against their foreheads. As an adamant harder than flint have I made thy forehead. Fear them not, neither be dismayed at their looks, though they be a rebellious house. Look at what God says to Ezekiel. God says, I know they're persistent, but I've made you even more so. I know they're strong, but I've made you even stronger. In the same way that God told Joshua, do not be afraid, but be strong and very courageous because I am with you, Joshua chapter 1. So he tells Ezekiel, don't be afraid. Don't fear them because I'm with you, because you're not alone, because I've prepared you for this purpose. Not only is there comfort to the watchman from, uh, from God saying that they would not be alone, that God strengthens, but there's also comfort from the fact that God speaks. You know, God has never left the message up to man's choosing. When He called Moses, He said, You speak this. And when He called Jonah, He said, The words which I give unto you, go and preach in the city of Nineveh. Even rebellious Balaam had to speak the word of God. And so God has not left it up to Ezekiel. God didn't tell Ezekiel, Hey, uh, you need to figure out what these people need to hear and go tell them because they're in danger. That's not what God did. God gave him the message. Ezekiel's given the message to be delivered in Ezekiel 3 and verse 11. 
It says, And go get thee to them of the captivity unto the children of thy people, and speak unto them, and tell them, Thus saith the Lord God, whether they will hear or whether they will forbear. Ezekiel's given the message to deliver, and what a comfort it is to know that God strengthens and God speaks. All of that then brings us to our fourth point today, and that is the commission. Ultimately, this is the focus of this text, this passage, the central idea that Ezekiel has been given a commission, a job to do. And it's a simple one. It's not easy. It's got those oppositions. We've already talked about that. But the command itself is a simple one. Give them warning. That's what Ezekiel's commissioned to do as a watchman. Who is he to give warning to? He's to give warning to the wicked and to the righteous. I know that we sometimes focus on warning the wicked. We think to ourselves as Christians, okay, there are people whose souls are in danger, and, uh, and that's obviously in, in uh, relation to those who are outside of the body of Christ, those who are wicked, and so we need to warn the wicked, and that's true. But the job of a watchman is not only to warn the wicked, but also to warn the righteous. Notice verses 17 through 21 of Ezekiel 3. God tells Ezekiel, Son of man, I have made thee a watchman unto the house of Israel. Therefore hear the word at my mouth and give them warning from me. When I say to the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, and thou givest him not warning, nor speakest to warn the wicked from his wicked way, to save his life. The same wicked man shall die in his iniquity, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Yet if thou warn the wicked, and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul. So you have warning to the wicked. But now notice verse 20. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness and commit iniquity, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Because thou hast not given him warning, he shall die in his sin. And his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered, but his blood will I require at thine hand. Nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not, and he doth not sin, he shall surely live because he is warned. Also, thou hast delivered thy soul. Again, the commission to be a watchman is to warn all people. We want to warn those outside of the body of Christ because their souls are in danger. They need to turn from their wickedness. But we must continue to sound the alarm for the righteous, that the righteous sin not, lest their righteousness be no longer remembered. I shudder to think about how many preachers in today's world will have blood required at their hands because they did not warn the righteous to sin not. The duty of a watchman is to warn the righteous and the wicked. What are they to do? They're to give warning. You know, preaching, declaring God's message is serious business. It's not about great flattering speeches. It's not about a prosperity gospel. It's not about telling people what they want to hear. It's about warning them because their souls are in danger. God said you warn them lest they lose their lives, their spiritual lives. And why? Because there are consequences for everybody involved. Which brings us to our fifth point, and that's the consequences. See, in this text, in Ezekiel chapter 3, there are consequences for every person set forth in this passage. The reason that Ezekiel must warn is because of these consequences. There's consequences in this text for the wicked. Remember, we just read God says, if the wicked man does not turn, he'll die in his iniquity. There's uh, consequences for the righteous. God says, if the righteous man's turned from his righteousness, his righteousness shall not be remembered. There's consequences in this text for the watchman. If the watchman does not give warning to the wicked and to the righteous, God says multiple times, as we've already noticed, that their blood shall be required at our hands. You know, we can sound the alarm and not everybody's going to listen to the alarm. Not everybody's going to run and, 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 and get to the place of safety. But we have the obligation of sounding the alarm. And as watchmen, if we fail to do that, there's consequences for our souls as well. See, Ezekiel has to give warning 
because every person's soul is at stake. The wicked, the righteous, and the soul of the watchman. That then brings us to our final point today, and that is the conclusion. And, and really wanting to make some application here from the call for Ezekiel to be a watchman. See, like Ezekiel was called to be a watchman over Israel, we're called to be the watchman for God's people today, for the church. And it is our duty as watchmen to answer the call. You know, Ezekiel was given the call to hear and then to speak. And we have to answer that same call. Our call is the Great Commission, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all the things that I've commanded you, and lo, I'm with you always, Jesus said, even to the end of the age. And so we have a call first to hear. We hear the gospel. We respond to it with obedience. We then continue in learning. And then we go and speak. We go and tell others and continue that process. Friends, if we're going to be watchmen, as God has called us to be watchmen, we must answer the call. Defending the truth and warning others demands that we ourselves have an ability to discern between truth and error. Remember, we cannot do our job as watchmen if we're ill-equipped. And so we must know the truth and then speak it to others. Let it first abide in us and then go and share it with others. Number two, we have to accept the challenges. You know, we're going to face at times the challenge of familiarity just like Ezekiel was facing. Uh, we may not always think about this as being a challenge, but sometimes it is. You know, you just take, for example, why we don't evangelize sometimes, especially to those that we're closest with. We, thoughts run through our mind like, you know, we, we think about, well, uh, what will they think about me? Will they still be my friend? Will they think I'm weird? Will they stop inviting me to social activities? Uh, will my children lose, you know, lose the, the opportunity to play with their children? So all of these thoughts run through our mind because of the opposition of familiarity, because we're scared that those with whom we've become so familiar might reject us if we try to tell them about Jesus Christ, if we try to tell them about the church. We have to face that opposition. We have to accept that challenge. And we have to accept the challenge of forwardness or rebellion. You know, sometimes a watchman can do everything right and still people will not heed the warning. In 1969, Hurricane Camille was headed for past Christian Mississippi. The chief of police there did everything he could to warn everybody to get to a place of safety or to evacuate the area because of the dangers of the storm. The owners and several inhabitants of a three-story apartment building who had probably ridden out several storms before, decided they would not evacuate. And when the storm came, every person in that building lost their life. Over 70 people total would lose their lives in past Christian Mississippi that night because they didn't heed the warning. Not everybody's going to heed the warning, but we must sound the alarm. Number three, we must appreciate the comfort. How wonderful it is to know that God strengthens us for His work. Jesus said, I'll be with you always, even to the end of the age. And He's given us His message right here in His Word. It's not up for you and I to decide. He's given us everything we need to know right here. We need to adhere to the commission. We must obey the great commission to go and to preach the gospel. We must obey the commission to help one another, to bear one another's burdens, Galatians 6 and verse 2. And we must acknowledge the consequences. This we must do because souls are at stake. The wicked, the righteous, and our own. God called Ezekiel to be a watchman to the house of Israel. And he calls all Christians today to be watchmen over his house, the church. We want to focus on being watchmen. To stand and to give warning. And if we fail in our task as watchmen, then destruction will surely come to those who were not warned. Where are you today? Are you in need of warning as one who has not obeyed the gospel? Are you in need of warning as one who is righteous but has taken up sin? Then friends, we warn you today, obey the gospel. Believe, repent, confess, and be baptized, having your sins washed away. If you've obeyed those initial commands, but you're now living a life of sin, your righteousness right now is not being remembered by God, and you need to turn back. We want to warn the wicked, 
We want to warn those outside the body of Christ. and We want to warn the righteous. Don't be engaged in sin. Obey the gospel if need be. And if you fall into either, neither one of those categories, then you're called to watch. So take your place upon the wall and watch and sound the alarm. Thank you so much for tuning in today. And I pray that this lesson has been a blessing to you. And God bless. have any questions about the Bible? Are you searching for a place to worship God like you find in the Bible? Do you have questions about your eternity? Would you like to know more about God's plan for you? Let me encourage you to visit a church of Christ near you today. And if you're interested in learning more about the Lord's Church, we also offer free material. For more information or if you would like to have a transcript or a copy of today's program, whether audio or video, please go to our website at www.bible-talk.org or you can email us at bible.talk at bible-talk.org You can also write to us at Bible Talk, P.O. Box 40, Fayette, Alabama, 35555. Simply include the program number and we'll be happy to send that to you completely free of charge. Thank you again for tuning in and may God bless you richly in your walk with Him.